the man they call the Reaper has been sitting comfortably within the top five fighters at middleweight since losing the belt. With dominant performances over top contenders and former title challengers, Robert Whitaker has solidified himself as one of the winningest fighters in the division's history. A recent stumble by longtime champion and rival Israel Adesanya had many wondering if the grappling skills of Whitaker could have propelled him to UFC gold once again if he had been given the matchup with Pereira instead. Couple this with extremely well-rounded and fresh-faced contenders up and coming, it raises the question, how good is Robert Whitaker's grappling? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. Today, I'm going to be breaking down Robert Whitaker's grappling. In order to do that, I'm going to look at six key elements of grappling as they relate to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give a score based on a scale of 1 to 10, and then at the end of the video, I take the average of those scores to give an overall grade. I base these scores off my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Every fight begins standing, so let's start with takedown defense. It's no secret that Bobby Knuckles is a high-level striker that has many reasons to want to keep the fight standing. So takedown defense has been an integral part of his game since day one. And for many of you watching, it may be the most important aspect to pay attention to. So let's get really in-depth with this one. Let me start by saying that Whitaker has had a solid level of competency in his wrestling defense since his earliest fights in the UFC. I'd also like to say that this man has always had one of the best sprawls in the division. His reaction time is just so quick and impulsive, it is almost impossible to initiate a takedown on him in an open space when he is standing there waiting for it. He's just going to see it coming and stop it. He oftentimes uses a common hybrid stance in MMA where the lead hand is kept low in order to immediately catch an underhook. In the rare occasions he doesn't end up with an underhook, he has a fantastic wizard and turns belly down with a limp leg to negate a lot of the chain wrestling that is attempted. Bobby Knuckles has a knack for throwing and landing with big combinations right after a wrestling shot which of course is a great deterrent for many takedown attempts. As the exchange approaches the cage, Robert has had mixed results in these phases. He certainly improved over the years in many aspects and gets taken down less often here nowadays, but I do still spot some weaknesses. He shows his back a bit too much, leading to some predictably bad situations, including him getting stuck in a handcuff position. At times, he leaves his feet too close together and not up against the cage, which enables opponents the ability to sneak in trips. One thing he does do to address these weaknesses lately has been to tie up the arms of opponents and nullify movement in general, until he can circle out, or in many cases just hangs tight until separated by the ref. The most glaring weakness of Robert's takedown defense can be seen when he is being the aggressor. Much like how I mentioned in the video about his striking, the best times to hit him are when he is coming forward. The same can be said about taking him down. He has the tendency to really overcommit to his blitz at times, and it makes him vulnerable to a clean level change and tackle. He almost always begins his combinations with punches too. The more clever opponents know that they just need to duck down and grab Ben Askren style whenever they see the Reaper starting to charge forward. Perhaps leading with front kicks or knees at the beginning of some of these combinations and attacks could address this issue. Whitaker's most redeeming quality for this category is his ability to get back to his feet quickly after being taken down. It's no doubt part of the reason why he gets his back taken so often, but he finds success with it more often than not, and negates what would have been a major point scoring opportunity for his opponents. Ultimately, there are a few weaknesses in Whitaker's skill set here, but they are mostly related to aggressive and high-level cage wrestling, and of course counters to when he's being aggressive himself with strikes. But Robert has also had some shining moments of wrestling mastery in the cage, the most notable example being the Olympic-level wrestling that was behind him multiple times and which found very little success in grounding the Australian native. So for takedown defense, I'll give him the score of 7.5. 
Let's look at ground and pound defense. A great way to avoid ground and pound is to avoid the ground entirely, or at the very least, avoid bottom positions. As we just saw, Whitaker has had some great takedown defense, but there have been a fair amount of times he's been put down, and a handful of times where he was forced into a bottom position for a sustained amount of time. Of those times, he had some very dangerous customers to deal with. For the most part, Bobby possesses a very defensive and passive guard, displaying a simple but effective collection of strike nullifying techniques of a level one might expect of a former UFC champion. Various combinations of over and under hooks and a difficult to pass close guard. By far the most impressive thing about Whitaker's grapple boxing defense is his ability to nullify most ground and pound damage after he's been dropped by a strike from a standing position. There are many examples of Robert being hurt on the feet, and yet he somehow finds a way to negate the barrage that follows. Far from luck, notice as he responds to the ref's commands by moving just enough each time the fight looks like it's about to be called. He uses his wrestling techniques to grab while he hides his head and uses his shoulders to take the brunt of the attacks while he clings on and recovers, oftentimes seamlessly transitioning back to his feet or his own grappling offense. It's important to note, however, that this type of defense would be a detriment under a skill set that allows knees to the head, as we've seen in his pre-UFC career. If he ever decides to make the move to 1FC, the Reaper will have to alter this part of his game to compensate for that. Most mistakes he makes are in the transition to get back to his feet, which has put him out of position, but really only against the best grapplers he's faced. While it's not a primary feature of his skill set, Bobby does have the skills to sweep and reverse high-level opponents, which he's shown off from time to time. Although this example against Yoel Romero isn't technically a sweep, it successfully got him out of a bad position and up to his feet against an insanely strong based grappler, making this instance one of the more impressive examples of his ground and pound defense. So while there's been a few times where opponents have busted him up a bit on the floor, he's shown he can still defend and escape against high-level competition a majority of the time, especially if he hasn't been hurt from a standing position already. So for this, I will give him the score of 8.75. Last thing to go over for defense is submission defense. Now, I'm not going to lie, this will be an especially subjective category because of the lack of really good examples to look at throughout his later career. The most well-documented example of submission defense is from quite some time ago when Hoon Kim handed him his one and only submission loss to date, a triangle choke that Robert actually had a few good opportunities to escape from, but failed to capitalize. The sequence starts with Whitaker getting his guard passed. He's trying to move away and in so doing, posts on Kim with his left arm. Hoon takes the arm nicely, but Robert does the correct thing and follows him, stacking his opponent and squaring back up with his hips. Unfortunately, he was still being a bit irresponsible with his arm positioning, which led to a triangle transition. What's interesting here is that Bobby Knuckles actually has the presence of mind here to recognize that the triangle was not fully locked. So he attempts to toss the legs off his shoulder while simultaneously passing, which is a pretty common defense. This tells us that Whitaker has a solid grasp of triangle defense, even in his early career. Unfortunately, he once again leaves his arm a bit straight in the pass attempt, which puts him back in an armbar. As is the dilemma with this type of scenario, the constant switching and defending of submissions finally caught up with Robert here. After defending the last armbar, he never squared his hips back up after attempting to pass, giving Hoon the perfect angle to re-attack with the triangle, this time locking it up and getting the tap. The only other real submission attempts he's had to deal with in his career that I've seen have been Kimura attempts from a standing position, once from Colton Smith and another from Adesanya. He moved in the correct direction each time and avoided being submitted or even taken down with them. But in reality, these attempts seem like mild threats really intended to get the Australian out of position. It's worth noting that Whitaker fought and defeated the likes of Rafael Natal and Jacare Souza, both of them possessing world-class jiu-jitsu skills, the latter of whom had Bobby's back for a time during their fight and was unable to threaten with any submission. 
Be that as it may, he gives fighters that back position a little more often than I think is necessary. I imagine it comes from his style of takedown defense, which has exposed him a bit in a way. With all this taken into consideration, I'll reflect that the only submission that Robert has really had to escape from in earnest in his career is the one that forced him to tap. And until I can see if his skills have improved since then against more elite submission threats, the best score I can give him is a 7.5. Time for some offense. Let's look at takedown offense. I'm compelled to point out that Whitaker's skills here have noticeably improved since entering the UFC, particularly when it comes to his Greco. Showing some weaknesses here in the past, he was only really able to rely on his double leg attack to get things to the ground. Now possessing trips and throws, it's something he's put in the work for and improved upon, complementing his overall takedown arsenal. Bobby typically only initiates the takedown as a reactionary measure. That is to say, he will mostly only look for takedowns if his opponent has attempted one themselves or engaged with him in a clinch. One of the rare occasions you might see Whitaker be the initiator in the takedown department is in more favorable matchups where he has the overall grappling advantage, such as the Till or Gastelum fights. The Reaper does a great job of setting these takedowns up with level changes, fakes, and of course his dangerous striking game. He's not as successful with the takedowns when he is the aggressor, but even just mixing in failed takedowns can help. I think that Whitaker needs to improve his finishing consistency up against the fence. This is one area that still plagues him even in his most recent fights, turning the round into a slog for both participants and not gaining much ground. There have been times where these grueling clinch wars have been implemented by Whitaker for seemingly no good reason. There's something to be said about a lack of grappling fight IQ when you're looking for a takedown in the last few seconds of a fight that you are almost certainly losing, especially considering his finishing rate on the ground isn't even very high. But more on that in a minute. For now, I'll say that Bami has some great wrestling skills to show off, and let's not forget that as a knockout artist, he can always use his fist as a means of getting the fight to the floor. But there's still plenty to work on here. So for takedown offense, I'll give him an 8.25. Time for some good old fashioned ground and pound. As I alluded to before, Bobby Knuckles has a talent for putting men down with strikes. And he has a pretty good finishing rate on the ground once he achieves that. But how does he fare against opponents who have all their wits about them? Well, I think there's enough evidence to suggest that he can get a bit overexcited at times, thinking he has guys hurt when in reality they aren't as compromised as he believes. This leads to him getting reversed in places he shouldn't be. The times where he isn't getting outmaneuvered are spent cracking opponents in the face with absolutely hellish elbows, which he can apply from the top or bottom position. Robert has an underrated and fluent passing game, which he usually uses to achieve the half guard position, a very excellent spot to land strikes from, and can be tricky to escape for those that find themselves on the bottom. This is where the Australian's ground and pound skills shine brightest, because it's where he's able to maintain control for extended durations. The last thing to mention about this category is that Whitaker does a great job of working his way around to the back mount from the clinch. It's another great spot to land devastating shots from, and Whitaker will do just that and often. Unfortunately, it's one of those difficult to hold on to positions for him, and he loses the advantage here somewhat quickly after gaining it. This is an area that holds the most potential for improvement in my opinion. If he can work on the control aspect in a few more areas other than half guard, it would be a truly devastating attribute of his ground game. But for now, he will earn the score of eight. Last category to discuss is submission offense, and unfortunately, this is yet another area that is really lacking in solid examples to focus on from his more recent fights, which is actually pretty surprising seeing as how he has five submission wins on his record. Like I said, all of them were prior to his UFC run, and I could only find footage of just one of those victories which was his rear naked choke win against Richard Walsh. Bobby Knox makes use of the aforementioned butterfly guard to sweep his opponent and land in mount, from which he immediately starts landing big shots. 
Walsh wants no part of it and gives up his back in order to try and quickly base up and shake Whitaker off the top. The Reaper pounces on this opportunity to hit the choke while both of Walsh's hands are planted, rendering them momentarily unable to defend his neck. Rob gets the arm under the chin right away and finishes with a very clean rear naked choke. All in all, I'm impressed by this win considering that Walsh seemed to be the more well-rounded grappler and was in fact dominating most of the grappling exchanges of that fight prior to the finish. Walsh would also go on to compete in the UFC himself, so this win for sure wasn't against a nobody by any means, but I wouldn't quite say it's a win against anyone elite. That is a continued theme of the rest of Whitaker's submission victories. Some of them were triangles and arm bars though, which at least shows a general diversity to his game. In fact, in his loss to Kim Hoon, Robert kind of ironically almost won the fight early on with a triangle arm bar from his back, but failed to break the posture of his opponent and got his guard past where he would quickly after be submitted. Almost as if Kim was saying, here, let me show you how it's done. We simply do not see any more glimpses of these skills during his UFC career from any position, either because he lacks the confidence to attempt them or his opponents have just been so aware that he never even had a chance to give anything a shot. Like I said earlier, it's not like he hasn't had good positions to attack with submissions from, as he frequently is able to take the back and mount positions. So this may be an area that can be improved greatly just from Bobby putting himself out there and actually attempting more. But until I see him do that against elite competition, the best score I can give him is a six. When all the scores are tallied up and I get the average, it gives Robert Whittaker the total grade of about 7.8 overall. When I average out the scores you gave him on the Discord, it gives him the total grade of 8.3 overall. You guys were uh, very generous with your scores. I think Robert's skills have noticeably evolved in all areas, and not just since his early career, but even in recent years when it comes to grappling. The emphasis on wrestling defense and offense is noticeable throughout and contributes to his well-roundedness as a fighter and longtime top contender of the division. I'm interested to see what part grappling will play in his battles going forward. Make sure to check out the channel memberships and the Patreon. It helps me make more videos like this more often. And now if you send in your videos of your training and sparring or your fights and matches, if you have those, I can break those down and give my analysis on them for you. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Take care.